making a helical gear with involute profile in Tinkercad. Ignore all the artifacts on the outside, that's a fault in Tinkercad. First thing we need is a gear with an involute profile. So we have to go to All. Then on page 2 we find Metric Gear. Grab it and place it on the plane. I need a gear about 60mm diameter so I'm going to increase the module to 3. I need a height of 20mm so we'll select that and it is 20mm. And the flanks are 59.35 so we'll just move that so now we need a disc of 60 mil we go back to basic shapes we'll grab a cylinder we'll hold the shift key and grab a corner and pull it till it's 60 the height we only want is 5 mil We'll give it a lot more uh, sides so it's more roundy. Then we'll place this, snap it somewhere accurate on a grid. Just use the arrow key for that fine adjustment. Press the wheel and then drag the screen up to get the view. Yep, it's on the grid. It's a 60mm, 60mm square on the grid. The disc is 5mm thick, so we'll now lower the disc 5mm, so we'll grab the arrow, pull it down until we read minus 5. Now we have to al align the gear to this disc, so we have that selected still. We hold the shift, click on the gear, press align up here. Now we'll click on the object we want to fix it to. So put it there, and that way the bottom object is still on the grid, and the top object is now aligned to it. We now have to cut one tooth out of the gear, so we'll grab a box and we'll stretch it out to the 60, the same as the disc on the bottom. Hold the shift, grab the corner, height wise we want the same as the gear, we want 20, so just type that in. Next we need a hole to cut a quadrant out of the corner. This is 60 by 60, so we want this one 30 by 30. So hold the shift. And the same height as the box, which is 20 mil again. So we just punch a 20 in there. Now we have to align this box to this corner. So hold the shift. This is selected. Hold the shift. Click on that one. Go back to align. We want that aligned with that corner and this line to that corner. Now grip that. Now we have to turn this box into a subtraction, so we press hole. And then align this hole subtraction to this bottom disc. This is already selected, so hold the shift, click the bottom disc, go align, click this disc again, because we want that to stand still, line it up that way and that way. If we zoom in on the corner, we can see it's on the grid. So it's on, it's on the same grid as the circle. Now we go to top view, we'll grab the top, zoom out a touch. Now we have to duplicate this box select the box, duplicate. Now we know this has 18 teeth and 18 goes into 360, 20 degrees so we have to move this box 10 degrees that way and then move this one up. So we click on this, we drag it a bit, where the number is we'll punch in 10 degrees. Now we'll select this bottom one. We have to move this one the opposite way. And then we punch in 80 degrees here to give us 10 degrees on the other side. We have to select the three objects above the plane and group them. So we have this one selected. 
we hold the shift key down and select this box and we need to select this gear and then we group and now we have one tooth when we get this tooth an angle at the to a helical angle these sharp corners are going to make protrusions into the gear next to it so we have to cut them away so we grab a roof we lift it up hold the shift key down so it locks into 45 degree increments now we need to spin it this way so another hold the shift key down we need this a bit smaller so we'll just click on the corner and punch in three millimeters there and three millimeters here and the height 20 mil as usual which we still have now it becomes a hole we'll drag this up to where we're going to cut this out we'll have to zoom in hold the uh, wheel and press it in so we can move the thing where we want it where we can see it better. Now we'll use the arrow keys to find move it. A bit more movement so we can see it better. A bit more zoom in. We notice it's a bit lower than the actual tooth so we have to lift it up. Since we can't see the arrow we have to go back to home. We grab the arrow so we're back on zero, back to top, zoom in, click the wheel down and drag it so you can see better. Now we need small increments of movement so we'll go point 0.1. Now we'll move it with the arrow keys. A little bit of undercut won't hurt. Let's see if it looks good. Looks all right. Still with the hole selected we duplicate now we want to move it to the other side so we'll go back to one mil oops grab the arrow hold the shift so we click onto the 90 degrees again now we use the arrow keys again to move it in. Now we shift back down to point one. Uh, hold, click the wheel mouse and wheel button and move it over so we can see better. Too much overlap. Now just check if it looks right. Maybe one more out. Might need a bit over, a bit down, no, back up. The other one's undercut in. Looks alright. Zoom out. 
We have this selected, we hold the shift, we select the other hole, and we select the tooth, we group. Now we'll have to tilt the tooth. We have it selected. Uh, we might have to go home. We've got this arrow here. We click on it. We drag it. And then we punch in 20. 20 degree helical. Then we hold shift and click the disc at the bottom. We group. Then we duplicate. Then we grab this arrow, punch in minus 20, then we press duplicate until we fill up the whole gear. Notice the artifacts coming in. We can check from the top. Looks all right. Now we go to front view, so we click on the front, and you notice the tooth teeth aren't level. So we'll have to do a big whole slice on the bottom to cut it level, and one whole slice on top to cut that level as well. So we go back to home. Now we'll go back to one mil grid snaps we'll grab a cylinder we want something a bit bigger to be safe so we'll go 62 click on the corner hold the shift we want a height of 10 now we have to ro lower this hole so it's protruding 3mm above the plane, so it cuts 3mm off the bottom of this gear. So we'll grab the arrow, and it's 10mm thick, so we have to go down 7 for minus 7. Now we need to align this on this disc here, so it gets cut off. So that's selected. We hold the shift, click on that disc. We go align, so we'll go back and click on this one because we want that one fixed. Center it there, center it there. Now we want to duplicate this disc and lift it up 10 mil above this 3 mil protrusion, so we want positive 13. So we duplicate. Try front, we can't see the arrow. Still can't see the arrow. Oh, we have to select it. Select the blank, select the disc again. We've got the arrow now. We can grab it up to 13. Then that's a 10 mil slice of the gear. We select, now we uh, select all of that and group it. This takes a while because there's a lot of drawings to process. Well, that was about five minutes, so be prepared to walk away and come back later. Now we have to put this level on the disc on the plane again, so we grab this and drop the three mil to zero. Now we need the 10 mil hole in the center, so we'll grab a cylinder, click on the corner, punch in 10, and 10, hold the shift, select the other one, align again, click on the gear, align to this, and then this. And then group. This is going to be another 10 minutes, so you might have to walk away. Then the usual export. 
everything. And this is going to take ages again. Oh, that's quick. And that's your gear. Just remember when you make the gear to mate with this one, its single tooth will be angled in the opposite direction. In this one the single tooth was tilted minus 20 degrees, but the mating one will be positive 20 degrees. Printed gears are never perfect, so you can force the shafts together and then roll them on each other to try to break them in. Narrower gears break in quicker, so it might be an idea to make the driven gear narrower.